What's up, everybody? So today I gotta explain hash maps in Java. Hash maps are a popular data structure. They store a pair of values, a key value pair. You have a key and a value associated with that key. The keys have to be unique, but the values can be duplicated. Hash maps do not maintain any order, but they are very memory efficient. When creating a hash map, we have to set up type parameters. We have to specify what the data type of the key is and its value. Here's how to create a hash map. We will type hash map, let's say map for short, hash map map equals new hash map. We'll need to import this class. It looks like we're missing something. Let's take a look. Raw use of parameterized class hash map. If we take a look at the hash map class, we have type parameter set up. There's two values. We learned about type parameters in the last video on generics. We can store any two types of values within a hash map. We have a key and a value represented by K and V. We have to send type arguments to the type parameters. When creating a hash map, we'll have to set up some type arguments. So after our hash map, we have to list the data type of what we're storing. These have to be reference data types. So let's say with our map, we're going to have products, an item, and a price. So for the item, that could be a string, a string representation of our item. So for the price, we could do an integer, but I think a double would be better because you can have dollars and cents. Then we also need to use the diamond operator after the second hash map. You don't need to state the data types again, even though you technically could. Java can actually infer what the data type is. So after the second hash map, add the diamond operator. And there we go. We have our hash map that we have named map. The way that we've set this up is that we've told the hash map class we're going to store a string as the key and a double as the value. So to put things in a hash map, we're going to take our map, call the put method. We're going to put something in the hash map. We've specified that we're storing a string, then a double. A string for the key and a double for the value. So let's say we have a store. And in our store, we sell produce. We will have an apple. And its price will be 50 cents, 0 0.50. To put something in a hash map, you use the put method. We have to pass in two values as arguments. All right, let's add a few more things. We'll have an orange. An orange will be 75 cents, let's say. Then a banana. Bananas are pretty cheap. They will be... 25 cents. All right, let's take a look at our hash map. I'm going to show you what happens if we output our map directly. System.out.println, our map, our hash map. And here's what we have. We have all the key value pairs printed within our hash map. We have a string and a double. String, double. String, double. Now with hash maps, the keys have to be unique. For example, let's say I try and put another orange within here. We'll attempt to add another orange, and we'll see what happens exactly. Put another orange within our map, and let's say that the price is 1 million Venezuelan dollars. Yes, oranges are very expensive in Venezuela because of inflation. So here's what happens if we have duplicate keys you actually overwrite the previous key value pair. Our orange is now worth 1 million Venezuelan dollars. So do keep that in mind. Hash maps cannot have duplicate keys. If you put another key value pair within a hash map and it already exists, you'll overwrite it. But that's also good if you want to change one of the key value pairs. Let's add one more key value pair. Let's say a coconut map.put. We will put a coconut within our hash map. Coconuts are a little more expensive. They'll be $1. Let's print our map to test it. There's our coconut. Then we can remove an element. To remove an element, take your map. Call the remove method. Here you're going to pass in a key. Let's remove our apple. Then print our map. There, the apple is gone. We have orange, banana, coconut but no apple. So I'm going to keep that in, but turn it into a comment. 
to get the value associated with the key, you can use the get method. So let me delete this print line statement. We will take our map, call the get method. Let's get the value with this key. Give me the value where the key is apple, is what we're saying. That would be 0 0.5, meaning 50 cents. Or we can get our coconut. The value associated with this key is 1, meaning $1. All right, you can also check to see if a key or a value exists. Here's how. We'll use the contains key method. Take our map, call the contains key method, and then pass in a key. Is there a key of banana? That returns a boolean, in this case true. Is there a pineapple? There is not. So that returns false. You could use this with an if statement. Here's how. We will check if, let me zoom in, if our map called the contains key method and then pass in a key. Does our map contain any apples? Contains key apple. If that returns true, we'll output map.get, then we'll get our apple. This will give us the price. Else, if contains key is false, then we'll output something else. We'll output key not found. All right, let's test this. So we do have an apple. We've set this up to return the price. But let's say we are looking for a pineapple. Contains key pineapple. If we do find a pineapple, we will get the price. Currently, there's no pineapples within our map. Key not found. So that's how the contains key method would be useful. We also have the capability to check to see if a map contains a value. So we will take our map within a print line statement, call the contains value method, and then pass in a value. Is there anything that's $1? 1 1.00. This returns a boolean, and that's true. Our key of coconut has a value of 1.00, $1. And you do have to pay attention to the data type too. If I were to pass in an integer, this does return false. You do have to keep that in mind too. That's how to check to see if a map contains a key and a value. You can return the size of a map using map.size. Map dot call the size method. Currently there's four key value pairs within our map. This will return the number four. To get the size of a map, call the size method. All right, now the last thing that we're gonna do, if we were to print our map, we're given this ugly formatting where we have a set of curly braces, then all the key value pairs comma separated. This time using a for loop, we're going to cycle through all the key value pairs. We will create an enhanced for loop. What we're going to iterate through is every key. And these have a string data type because that's the way that we set them up. The data type of each element is going to be a string, which we will name key colon, think of it as in, for every key in. Now, what we have to do is get all the keys from our map. And there's actually a method for that. A beginner's friendly way to get all the keys from our map, what we can do is take our map, call the key set method. This will return all the keys within our map. And they're iterable, so we can use them within a for loop. For every key in our set of keys, what do we want to do? Let's do the following. Within a print line statement, let's print our key, plus we'll list each product and its price. Key plus, maybe I'll add a colon, space, then pick a unit of currency. I'll pick American dollars. For every key, we need to get its value. So we can use the get method, plus map.get, pass in our key. By using an enhanced for loop, we can customize the output of the key value pairs. And I think this looks a lot better. We have each product, 
each piece of fruit, and its price, laid out in this format. You could technically use printf if you want to display two digits after the decimal, but that might be a little too much for this lesson. I want to keep it as simple as possible. Alright everybody, so those are hash maps. It's a data structure that stores key value pairs. The keys have to be unique, but the values can be duplicated. We have to specify the type for the key and its value. And well everybody, those are hash maps in Java.